here we're going to talk about the unit circle and the cosine rule. So starting with the unit circle, what a unit circle is, is essentially a circle put with the center in origin and a radius of one unit, meaning that the edge of the circle hits one on the x-axis, one on the y-axis, negative one on the x-axis, and negative one on the y-axis. What this unit circle can be used for is to describe what cosine and sinus actually uh, show. So for, the, for this example, we have a line here which goes uh, through the unit circle starting from origin, has the angle theta, and we have a point here where the line intersects the circle. This point will then have the coordinates of cosine of theta and sine of theta. The same thing goes for this line down here, except this is negative theta because this sine uh, this line is opposite. This line will then of course have the coordinates cosine of negative theta and sine of negative theta. As you can see, the distance here from origin to over here is sine, which is why this coordinate is sine of theta. And this distance here from origin to point n over here is cosine of theta, which is why the x is the cosine of theta. And lastly, out here, we have the tangents of theta, which is a line uh, which goes from the 1 on the x-axis all the way up until it intersects the line from mentioned before. Now for how you would use sine, cosine, and tangents. First, uh, you need to know how or what you need to use to find sine, cosine, and tangents. For sine, you simply divide the opposite side of an angle by the hypotenuse in the triangle. And for cosine, you use the one of the adjacent sides of the angle divided by the hypotenuse. And for tangents, you use the opposite side of the angle divided by the adjacent side of the angle. Now, one thing that's important to note here is that these rules only work when using right angled triangles. So in all of these examples, just imagine that they're all right angled, that they have a right, a right angle here, a right angle here, for example, and a right angle here. You cannot use this with an arbitrary triangle, only arbitrary right angle triangles. So for examples here, for some examples here, we have this triangle where we want to find out what the length of side x here is. We have this angle here, and we have this side, which is the hypotenuse. And to find out what the opposite side is, we simply put all the values into the formula. So sine of 63 degrees equals x divided by 20 because x is the opposite side and 20 is the hypotenuse. Then we isolate x and we just calculate and get the result 17.8, which should be the length of x here. Now for an example of how to use cosine. In this triangle, which is a sketch, which is why it is quite inaccurate, we have this angle of 32 this adjacent side of 12 and the hypotenuse of x. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's a pretty bad sketch, but this is supposed to be the hypotenuse. Again, we simply just put our values into the formula. So cosine of 32 equals 12 divided by x. Then you isolate x and we get the result of 14.2. Lastly, we have an example of how to use tangents. In this triangle, we're going to try and find out what the angle is by using the, the opposite side and the adjacent side, or opposite side here and the adjacent side here to our angle. Again, we simply put our values into the formula. So tangents of x equals to 15 divided by 4, meaning the tangents of x equals to th uh, 3.75. And to find out what the angle actually is, you want to use inverse tangents. This also goes for the other ones, where if you have the sides, you can find out what the angle is by using inverse tangent, or the inverse versions of the respective uh, rules. And you can see here that from using the inverse tangents, we get the angle of 75.1 degrees right here. Now for the cosine rule. The cosine rule is essentially a way of find another way of finding the sides and angles in an arbitrary triangle. And the cosine rule is essentially that a squared, uh, which is or a side a squared equals b a side uh, squared plus c another side squared minus two bc times the cosine of the angle opposite to a squared, so cosine of a. 
So as you can see here, the formula then becomes cosine of a equals to b squared uh, plus c squared minus a squared, uh, which is the opposite side to the angle you're trying to f find, divided by 2bc. An example of how you could use this to find a side is here. So you have this triangle with this side, which is 3 units, this side, which is 8 units, this angle, which is 27 units, and the opposite side, which is a. So if we put this into the formula, we get a squared equals 8 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times 3 times 8 times the cosine of 27. Then if we simplify, we get a squared equals 64 plus 9 minus 48 times 0 0.891. Then we simplify again, so we get a squared equals 73 minus 42.8 and we simplify again, so we get a squared equals 30.2, and then we want to remove the a squared, or the squared part, so we get a equals the square root of 30.2, which is 5.5, or uh, around 5.5, meaning that this side is 5.5 units long. Next, if you want, here's an example of uh, how you would find an angle. So here you have a triangle with a side which is 7 units long, a side which is 5 units long, a side which is 11 units long, and this opposite side which is A, which is opposite to the one that is 5 units long. In this case, you would use the formula for finding angles, so cosine of A equals to 11 squared plus 7 squared minus 5 squared divided by 2 times 7 times 11. You'll notice that you will always have to subtract the side which is opposite to the angle you're trying to find and since uh, when doing addition and multiplication it doesn't matter which order it's in you can always just input the two adjacent sides to the angle that you're uh, trying to find now if we simplify what we said uh, what we found earlier we get cosine of a equals 145 divided by 154 then we simplify so we get cosine of a equals 0 0.942 and to find out what the angle is, we simply take the inverse cosine of 0 0.942 and get 19.6 degrees angle here. So lastly for the proof of the cosine rule. To prove the cosine rule, you can draw an arbitrary triangle like this triangle here, where we have uh, corner A, corner C, corner B, side B, A, and C here. C is the entire, uh, this entire side while this side here is x and this side here is c minus x. Then you have the height which is here, uh, which is the height of the triangle of course, and those are all the values you need. Also, yes, you also have this point here which is point, we'll call it point h because it, it's the point where the height meets the baseline. So to start out we're going to use the Pythagoras theorem on the left side of the triangle here. We can see we have a catheter here, x, and a catheter here, h, and the height, b, here. So we put it up in x squared plus h squared equals b squared. Then we can also use Pythagoras to rearrange it and have h as the subject of this formula. So h squared equals b squared minus x squared. Next, we have the other half of the triangle here, which we're also going to use the Pythagoras theorem on. Um, Usually, because this is an arbitrary triangle, this length and this length here can be completely different. In this case, they're not because of the sketch I've drawn. But this is why they're written th this way instead of just being the same value. So yeah, we have the catheter here, C minus X, and the catheter here, uh, H, and the hypotenuse A. And you put them in the formula, so we get C minus X squared plus H squared e equals A squared and we rearrange that to make h the subject of the formula. So h squared equals a squared minus uh, cx, uh, c minus x squared. Now, since h is the subject of both formula, or h squared is the subject of both formulas, we can then set them to be equal to each other because that means that these two formulas must be equal. So we say that b squared minus x squared equals to a squared minus uh, bracket c minus x squared or, yeah, 
Then next we expand the c minus x squared inside the bracket. So you end up with c squared minus 2cx plus x squared. Now we can add x squared to both sides to neutralize these two uh, minus x's. So we end up with b squared equals a squared minus c squared plus 2cx. Now one thing we know with the uh, with usual cosine is that this angle here is going to be um, it's going to be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So we can set this up in this way. So cosine to a will be equal to x the uh, the adjacent side divided by the b the hypotenuse. That means you can also rearrange this to be b times cosine of a equals x. Since this is equal to x, it means we can substitute x in this formula with b times cosine of a. So if when we do that, we get b squared equals a squared minus c squared plus 2cb uh, times cosine of a. And if we uh, rearrange it, we can get a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2cb times the cosine of a, which is then the cosine rule.